In this video, we'll be going over how ordinary differential equation or ODE solvers work, including Euler's method and the famous Runge-Kutta methods. And illustrated on the two plots on the left is how higher order Runge-Kutta methods, specifically RK4 in this case, use multiple evaluations of the derivative function in order to estimate the solution to said differential equation, which can also be thought of as the area under the curve of a derivative function. And specifically, we'll be using one circular and one highly eccentric orbit, like is shown here, in order to illustrate how error accumulates and how step size affects error and we'll also be discussing how it makes sense for ODE solvers to use adaptive step sizing methods based on how quickly the derivative is changing throughout the propagation. There's a third video in this series and in this one we'll be covering ODE solvers and an introduction to runge Kutta. and if you haven't seen it already on this channel I have the space engineering podcast where in this clip here Juan talks about why JPL uses an Adams method over a runge Kutta method for their orbital mechanics propagations and I'm also making this video series in Spanish. So let's start with the simplest method of numerically solving a differential equation called Euler's method. And in this case, we'll use a differential equation df dx is equal to x, which has an analytical solution of f of x is equal to x squared over 2. And in order to solve this using Euler's method, you evaluate the derivative of a function at some time, and you assume that the derivative is constant for the whole time step. In this example, the derivative at x equals 0 is 0, since df dx equals x. So for the first time step, we assume that the slope of the solution to be 0 for the whole time step, which gives us our first step here that's just flat all the way to the time step, which in this case is 0 0.2. At the next step, we again evaluate the derivative, which this time is equal to 0 0.2 since df dx is equal to x. We assume that that slope is constant for the whole time step and go to the next time step and so on and so forth. And we immediately see that our estimate of the solution is quickly building error since the slope is continuously increasing, but we are assuming the slope to be constant within the time steps. This method of solving a differential equation can also be thought of as calculating the area under the curve of the derivative function. So here we have the acceleration in the x direction of a spacecraft in orbit on top and the corresponding velocity where acceleration is a derivative of velocity. So same as before, we evaluate the derivative function acceleration here and assume it is constant throughout that time step in order to estimate the velocity at that time step. And this is done by multiplying the derivative value and the time step together, where this is also equivalent to the area of a rectangle that has a height of the derivative evaluation and a width of the time step. So here, the next estimate of the velocity is equal to the previous estimate plus the area under the curve of the acceleration function, which is also equal to the cumulative area under the curve of acceleration. Now let's take a look at how runge Kutta methods work, specifically by looking at a fourth order method. So here, instead of just evaluating the derivative once in Euler's method, higher order runge Kutta methods evaluate the derivative multiple times in order to get a better estimate of how the function changes over one time step. And these are a family of methods because you can choose any order you want, with the most common being fourth and fifth order. And this is a fourth order method because we are evaluating the derivative four different times in order to gain a better estimate of the derivative value for our given time step. So on the right is how the derivative function is being evaluated. The first value k1 is exactly the same as before, just evaluate the derivative at the current time step and the state, and that is the red points on this acceleration plot. Next is k2, which estimates the derivative halfway between now and the next time step, hence why h here is divided by 2, as well as the state being updated by what it would be half a step into the future, and these are all the green dots in the plot. Same with k3, halfway between now and the next time step, and using k2 to update the estimated state, find what this derivative evaluation would be. And finally, k4, which evaluates the derivative at the end of this time step. And these k values are then summed up with k2 and k3 having twice the weight of k1 and k4. And then divided by 6, hence becoming a weighted mean of these derivative function evaluations. And then we use that mean estimate of the derivative between now and the next time step to update our estimate of the function at the next time step. 
So to summarize, runge kata methods use weighted averages of derivative evaluations throughout the given time step in order to find the areas under the curves of the derivative functions. Even though higher order runge kata methods take better estimates of derivatives, they still will grow error over time. And in this example, we see that using a 500 second time step, after just seven hours of this orbit, the error of the velocity has a magnitude of the actual velocity itself, which is obviously very problematic. But notice that if we decrease that time step to 100 seconds, the error stays very close to zero. Same thing here, looking at the x acceleration and velocity of the highly eccentric Molniya orbit for step size of 500 seconds. Again, the error and velocity becomes over the magnitude of the velocity itself, but at 100 seconds, it stays very small. ODE solvers therefore make trades between function evaluations, which translates to compute time, and error from the true solution of the differential equation, which is the accuracy of the solution. But instead of just using the same step size the whole time, you can change that step size based on the dynamics of the system over time. So when the solution to a differential equation is approximately linear, this means that the derivative is roughly constant. So even just using Euler's method will yield you a good estimate of the solution with larger time steps. Therefore, when the derivative is relatively constant, an ODE solver can use larger time steps without sacrificing accuracy. And in the case of this highly eccentric orbit, a solver would use a larger time steps in the places labeled with the green arrows. And on the other hand, when the derivative is changing rapidly, the solver should use smaller time steps in order to maintain accuracy. And in this orbit, the solver would use smaller time steps where the red arrows are. And this adaptive step sizing method is why you'll see when a solver errors, the message will say step size becomes too small because even with a step size near machine epsilon, which is a floating point limit of your computer, the solver can't achieve its tolerance constraints. This video is just an introduction to ODE solvers, but they are an entire field of study in within themselves. So I'll be going much further in depth about how they work and how to write your own solvers in the numerical methods with Python series, which I'll have a link in the description too. But for now, I believe that what is covered in this video is enough to give you a good foundation for why we use these methods. And in the next video, we'll cover how to use them in Python for the application of orbital mechanics. So I posted all the scripts that I used in order to make all the plots and visuals for this video. So if you go to the GitHub repository, src foom3 ODE solvers intro, and you can start with the Euler's method. So that Euler's method plot right here. This has this is just a script that I used to make that plot. So you have your Euler step, derivative of the function, the function itself, and then just doing all the plotting. And same thing with the Molniya orbit plot with the acceleration and velocity. So you can just go in here and see everything that I did for that. And these Molniya orbital elements, you can try changing them out. So you, that was just Molniya, but you can try a bunch of different orbital elements and see how the plots change, as well as trying different values for H. And then in order to run them, it's actually pretty simple. Starting from the base directory of the repository, you can say CD SRC, Python 3, Foom 3, and then we want to do the Molniya plot can just run it like that and then we full screen it and it loads it's running a little bit slower because I'm doing the screen recording but then there is a plot so you can just really quickly run through that change some of the orbital parameters and the time steps to kind of experiment with those plots yourself so that's it for this video be sure to hit like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the future videos coming out and to help me out with YouTube algorithm and the next one we'll be getting into the Python of writing your first kind of hello world and orbital mechanics which is just doing a simple two body propagation using ODE solvers. So again let me know if you have any questions or comments about this video if anything was too confusing that I should explain more and thank you for watching.